Hello, and welcome to Tyrion Cuthbert, Attorney of the Arcane. Yeah, this is the next game I'm gonna play. This is a very similar game to Ace Attorney. I think it's more of an indie project, but it's heavily inspired, and you will be able to tell once we start playing. But I saw this game on Steam, and I was like, this this looks a lot like Ace Attorney. <laughs> I'm gonna bring up the comparison a lot because it's clearly inspired, but I always love the Ace Attorney series. And this seems like it is a, a good attempt at making a game that is heavily, you know, inspired by it. Don't know anything else about it, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go to settings. The music's a little bit loud. And text speed will always be fast. Size will make it larger. It's a good resolution. You can probably tell them this is the first game I'm going to be playing on this channel with a keyboard and mouse. But yeah, I, like I said before, I know nothing about this game. But it seems pretty cool, so I'm gonna give it a try. So, let's head in. New game. Seems like there are five cases, which is the standard fare for Ace Attorney games. Uh, case one, the cold-hearted aristocrat. Mm. I hope I'm pronouncing T Tyrion Cuthbert or Tyrion Cuthbert right, but that's how I'm gonna pronounce it. The fields of battle are filled with suffering and despair. On them are a clash of souls, souls brought to conflict by the corrupt powers that rule over them. I was transporting a client on my carriage that evening. We were driving by McCoy's tavern when we heard a disturbance. I was worried that something was amiss, so I walked into the building to see what the commotion was. Oh wow, you can see a lot of information here. Well, let's see the options, so... This is like your evidence. There are spells because, you know, Attorney of the Arcane. So there's gonna be magic involved. We are Tyrion Cuthbert, age 20, defense attorney. We have no arcane arts. This is the, ooh, text log, which is always a nice thing to have. Save box, might as well uh, save. And this, these are the settings we saw before. That's return to the title menu. And that is to quit the game. It's very interesting that they let you quit the game off the bat. <laughs> well, all right. There I saw the defendant. She was lit by the blue glow of the dining room lights. And she was stabbing the victim with her magical sword. OBJECTION! OBJECTION! <laughs> Mr. Rudolph, you testified that you saw my client murdering the victim. And you supposedly saw her casting magic while doing so? Uh, yes, I, I could never forget such a grisly sight. The moment was burned into my memory. I see. Well, it's funny that you say that. H how so? Because your entire testimony... Was a complete lie. W what? Objection! Oh! <laughs> Are you accusing the witness of perjury? Surely you know that such an accusation can't be made lightly, Mr. Cuthbert. My accusation is far from baseless, Steelwind. Her name is Steelwind. <laughs> Think about the state of the crime scene at the time of the murder. The witness couldn't have seen anything, much less a homicide. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> uh, he knows something. What? Is that? Is, oh, it's like, it's kind of like one of those things that you saw in the um, uh, Dual Destinies for Athena. But he has the emoticons. Go. <laughs> but on this battlefield, there are still a few people who carry the ideals of justice, but within their hearts. Okay. <laughs> but you have to wonder sometimes: Are these ideals truly just, or are they simply lies fed to us by our elders? Damn it. Oh. Oh, is there a way to see the art? Uh, I'll be right back just to look at the menus. Ah, uh, hide UI is right click. Okay. So he's got a drink here that's, you know, broken glass. A giant thing stabbed right through him. I don't know what this is. Uh, but yeah. Flintheart, you fool! Why couldn't you just have listened to me? Uh, Rudolph. I require your assistance. Uh, yes, sir. But by the scaled lord, what did you... You killed him. Okay, well, we, we know who the, uh... We know who the, uh... Killer is. Uh, alert the town guards. Tell them that you saw his daughter fleeing the scene. Actually, no, I don't know if that works. Right. I'm sure that the neighbors heard them arguing with each other. They'll immediately suspect her. Um... At once, sir. Episode 1, The Cold-Hearted Aristocrat. Okay. 
earlier that day. Ugh. You feel yourself slowly succumbing to the unbearable pain. Oh, there's narration. You, you never see this in an Ace Attorney game. You don't think you'll be able to survive this much longer. Um, are you sure you're okay, Kuthbet? You look like you're about to pass out. Uh, name, Ruby Timora. Occupation, attorney. Uh, don't worry about me, Miss Timura. I'm, I'm fine. Timura. Timura, probably. You've been riding this carriage for days. You're definitely not fine. <laughs> With each bump in the road, you feel yourself becoming more and more nauseous. It's taking every ounce of willpower just to hold down your lunch. I'm, <coughs> I'm perfectly fine. I'm fine! <laughs> well, if you say so. Well, you feel the carriage drive over a large bump in the road. You can feel and hear your stomach retching in protest. The stew you ate for lunch doesn't taste nearly as good as the second, the second time. No. Oh, no, it's on second thought. Uh, that's better. You take a deep breath of fresh air. It's the first breath that you've taken today that hasn't threatened to come back out. Oh, no. Uh, sorry about this. I didn't expect the roads in this town to be this uneven. I suppose they don't get a lot of traffic here. You've been on the road with your mentor for days. Oh no! I don't want to say to I don't want to spoil anything for Ace Attorney for those who haven't played it. But uh, for those you know who haven't, you should definitely check it out and check out this game afterwards because this will be probably a fun. Now, so far, it's been pretty good quality. <laughs> it's been pretty good, even though it's only been like uh, five minutes. <laughs> You've been on the road with your mentor for days, but yeah, well, let's not talk about Ace Attorney mentors. Together, you've been searching for a man named Flintheart McCoy. Supposedly, he's been a voice of dissidence against King Oliver for the, these past few decades. Few decades? Okay. You have no idea what kind of business Miss Timora would have with him. But you know better than to ask questions about her affairs. Hey! Hello, travelers! Welcome to Cornhaven! The local merchant steps out from one of the nearby shops. He has a wide smile on his face, and he approaches your carriage with the enthusiasm of a starving vulture. Would a pair of dignified individuals such as yourselves care for a refreshing drink? <laughs> Those clothes, they must be from the city. Oh, oh, so we can see their thoughts? But he's happy because he's trying to, maybe he's trying to scam us, hmm. Or maybe he just wants to, you know, talk to some city people. Who knows? Uh, he certainly has a friendly expression. Oh, I guess these are his expressions, but these are his thoughts? Oh, okay. But his thoughts seem very analytical. Well, I don't need a drink, but... Miss Timora glanced at you, and your stomach rumbles in agreement. Ah, oh, of course! I have just the thing for an upset stomach. With a carriage like that, I bet I could fleece, all, <laughs> fleece them for a lot. Okay. His thoughts and emotions are laid bare through your eye. Eye of Horus? Okay. But the merchant's expressions doesn't ex betray a hint of what he's truly thinking. You wonder if his false smile could get any bigger. At this rate, he might dislocate his jaw. How about two flasks of apple juice for 50 silver piece? Oh, damn, that's no. 50 SP? You may find that price daunting, but this organic and fresh made apple juice. It's just store bought juice, but I bet they can't even tell the difference. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot an empty bottle of store bought apple juice. It's resting on a table inside the merchant's shop. Store bought apple juice has been added to your notes. Alright, let's see. Type. Clue. The Cornhaven merchant has a bottle of store bought apple juice. It's resting on a table inside a shop. It's suspiciously empty. Okay, notes. Ty Tyrion will make mental notes of notable clues that he sees in the world. These notes are instrumental to solving mysteries and progressing through the game. You can check these notes at uh, any time by opening the toolbar on the top left of the screen. Trust me, it's worth the extra gold. Normally, the price wouldn't matter that much to you. But you don't appreciate being treated like an easy mark. Oh god! Argument. Wow, we have an investigation in the tutorial case. Huh, interesting. Arguments. You started an argument with another character. Oh my, I, I keep pausing because the music, I'm feeling the music. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> During an argument, your opponent will make claims that you need to respond to. Responding correctly will lower your opponent's confidence. Responding incorrectly will lower your confidence. And once you run out of confidence, you will lose the argument. I think you need to elaborate. You said that this apple juice is organic, but where is it made? It's produced by the hard-working people of this town, of course. I only trade or organic products. Okay. In a small town like ours, we only deal with locally sourced products. For certain claims, you need to present a piece of evidence to refute that claim. To proceed, present the piece of evidence that contradicts your opponent's claims. So, okay. Okay, present evidence. You say that, but I can see an empty bottle of store-bought juice inside your shop. Why would you have something like that if you only deal with organic products? Oh, oh, how, how did that get there? Make no mistake. I only have that because I want to see how my products compare to the city. And let me tell you, that mass-produced slop doesn't even compare to my product. What an obvious lie. This juice is worth far more than what I'm offering. Honestly, I'm offering you a very good deal. Interpreting during arguments. For certain claims, you will need to look at your opponent's thoughts and emotions. Choose a correct response depending on the information screen. Oh, scene. Oh, we see this girl. I wonder if we'll see her like later on in the story. Logic. Choose this option if your opponent's thoughts contradict something in your notes. Intuition. Choose this option if your opponent's thoughts contradict their claim. Empathy. Choose this option if your opponent's emotion contradicts their claim. Okay, so logic is evidence. Intuition is your thought. The okay, sorry, I, I just need to get this. So logic is when something that they say contradicts your evidence or your notes. Intuition is when it contradicts what, like, the, uh, one of the things on the screen. So their thought contradicts with what they're saying. Oh, right, we can read their thoughts, I forgot. So there'll be two lines that show up. Like here, my conscience is clear. I need to stay calm. <laughs> and uh, emotion is when their emotion on the, the, one of the four emotions contradicts with their claim. Okay, let's go. All right, so they don't have any emotion now. So it's going to be uh, probably this. Juice is worth far more than what I'm offering. <laughs> I usually only sell this stuff for five SP a flask. Sir, it's obvious those flasks are only worth 5 SP. What? How did you? Ugh. Well, it's, it's clear you're a very shrewd man. Right. Argument 1. I'm so thirsty. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot a child watching you from afar. Her eyes are fixed on the flask of apple juice. How about 20 SP for three flasks? Uh, of course, sir. So we're getting them for like a little bit over six a flask, but I guess he got them for five, so he's still making a profit a little bit. I mean, if you don't count shipping, ah, uh, whatever, it's too much work. The Kingdom of Wyvern Guard, huh, established around 2,000 years ago by the seven high archmages. Oh, so this is a. I know there's magic, but I didn't realize this is gonna be a fully fantasy setting. The kingdom is currently ruled by King Oliver de Wyvern Guard and the mages of his nobility. The nobility will tell you that our marvelous kingdom is a land of prosperity and happiness. A land where its people share the wealth and succor provided by the kingdom's magic. Uh, th thank you. I haven't had anything like this in years. A child's passing thoughts tell you exactly how much succor the kingdom is sharing. Uh, I didn't know that you had such an eye for rural economics. Well... I suppose I just have good intuition for this sort of thing. Or did you use another kind of eye? Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, your so-called Eye of Horus is an amazing gift. You should take every opportunity to hone it. Wait, time out, she's 46?! Wood. <laughs> but try to be more subtle next time. If I can see through you, others will be able to as well. R right. Anyways, I did ask something around when you were... <laughs> Haggling. Supposedly, the McCoy Tavern should be uh, north of here. If my tip is correct, this should be the place. We didn't move at all, though. <laughs> Wait, this is the McCoy Tavern? With the state it's in, calling it a tavern is being pretty generous. You find it hard to believe that this has a secret meeting place for dis dissidents. But now that you think about it, 
Maybe that's the entire point. The tavern has been shut down for years. Nowadays, Flint Hart just uses it to host his rallies. Although, I do wonder how they've been keeping themselves afloat for this long. Hi, hi you lot! The McCoy Tavern is closed! A gruff man approaches your carriage as you step out of it. He's eyeing you and Miss Timora, a clear look of contempt on his face. I take that you're Flynn Hart McCoy? I am! What of it? Occupation unemployed. <laughs> Sorry for not writing ahead of time, but I'm Ruby Timora. I wanted to speak with you. Ruby Timora? Wait! THE Ruby Tamora? Any animosity he initially had immediately vanished. He lets out a laugh. It's, it's as if he were meeting an old friend. Why didn't you say so? Come on in! You didn't expect someone like him to know about Miss Tamora. Are you supposed to make sense? They both fight against the same enemy. I'll bet, in different ways. Sorry about the mess. We haven't exactly been... Well, anyways. What brings you here? I take that you didn't just journey all the way to see my wretched tavern. Or wrecked tavern. Wrecked cavern, oh my god. <laughs> I'm here on the behalf of a client. We have a proposition that you might be interested in. Is there anywhere we can talk more privately? Sure, the, ki the kitchen's empty. Wonderful. Tyrion, stay here while I speak with McCoy. W what? You don't you need my help? There's no need for that. Like hell, there's no need for that. If she's trying to make a deal with Flintheart, you can easily read his thoughts to help her. Oh god, she's angry. She's like, nope, no you don't, no you don't, no, no. <laughs> uh, you desperately want to object, but she shoots you a stern look that causes you to freeze up. You slowly look away from her. I hope the mouse isn't too distracting. I kind of like to move my mouse along the text sometimes while I read. And this... Maybe I could use a controller, but I kind of want to use the keyboard and mouse for something. You spent some time waiting alone in the tavern's dining area. It's already been hours since Miss Timora and Flynnhart went to talk in the kitchen. We just want to see this again, so we have a magician looking dude here, and I don't really know this. This looks like a magical battle or something. Alright. You can hear faint murmurs from behind the closed door. And you've been re resisting the urge to eavesdrop. But even from here, you can tell that their conversation is slowly becoming more frustrated. It looks like they're gonna be here a while. Well, it's a good thing that you always bring a chess set around. You bring out the small chessboard that you've carried around since you were a child. Chess can be played with one person. You've always taken advantage of that. You can? <laughs> oh, checkmate. You win against yourself, this time as Black. <sighs> I've played 10 games already. I've won 7 out of 10 times as Black. Uh, hello? Uh, statistically, White is more likely to win. Um, unbeknownst to you, you're thinking out loud. <laughs> so why am I performing so much better when playing as Black? Uh, hello? You still don't notice her, and you're verbalizing your thoughts just as fast as you're thinking them. Am I becoming overconfident as white because it has the first move advantage? Or perhaps that advantage is affecting my choices and making me play in the suboptimal manner? If a personal quirk of is making me play illogically, then I need to correct it. Also, we're 20 years old, I kind of forgot that. Hey! Oh, oh, wait, what? How long have you been standing there? It's about time you noticed me! I've been trying to get your attention for a while now! Oh, oh, oh sorry. Do you know where my dad is? Your dad? Then Hartmiko! Well, I'm sorry because it seems like you're going to be accused of murder and your dad's going to die. Oh no, I can't. I, okay, you know, she, Celeste was in the cover art of this game. So uh, I guess she's she's probably going to be our, uh, whatchamacallit, our Maya <laughs> or our assistant. You also saw her in court. I didn't actually mention it, but she was standing next to us, so she's definitely our Maya. Or, um... Uh, Flenhard McCoy. Uh, I'm his daughter, Celeste. Name, Celeste McCoy. Occupation, mercenary. Huh. She has a very cute design. Oh, um, Flenhard is speaking with my ma... 
mentor right now. Oh, so is she gonna be? Oh, she's gonna be our mom. Uh, I take back the wood. Ah, <laughs> uh, I want to show him something. Do you know when they'll be done? I don't know. They've been speaking in the kitchen for a while now. You hear Flinhart and Mr. Mora's voices getting louder and more frustrated, but Celeste doesn't seem to notice. Her eyes seem to be focused on your chessboard. This is chess, right? Are you playing against someone? Oh, <laughs> I'm playing against myself, actually. Uh, oh, that's, uh... You feel a judgmental stare. Playing alone helps me develop new strategies. Plenty of professionals do it. Hey, hey, I'm not the type to shame a man for playing with himself. Okay. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm gonna skip that. <laughs> oh man, she said it with that face too. Th that's... Relax, I'm just joking. Anyways, if you're still waiting for your mentor, do you want to play a game? Oh, you know how to play? Sure, I've read about this before. She reads about it. Ugh, this table's so dusty. Celeste takes a seat on the other side of the table. She tries to set up her side of the board, but fumbles with the pieces. She stares at one of them, confused. Um, how do I arrange it these again? <laughs> uh, part of you regrets accepting her challenge, but it would be impolite to back out now. Here, I'll arrange them for you. Thanks! Oh, she's so cute! <laughs> Checkmate. You defeat her in two moves. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! She got hit with a two move checkmate! <laughs> Uh, oh, she's 19, and oh, she, she the first person to have a trans, uh, arcane art. Transmutation. Actually, you know what? Let's go and look at our, uh, our evidence or people. So, we still have the apple juice, no spells, and we got four profiles. Ours is the same. Ruby Tamora. So, I guess she is old enough to be our mother. Yeah, okay. So, I get, I'm assuming she's our mother then. Maybe adopted? Because, I mean, I know if... The father has the same hair color and eye color. Maybe we got the genes from him, but we don't really share many similarities. So I'm going to assume adopted for now. And we are a defense attorney, but she's just an attorney. And he's 52 and unemployed, bodyguard. Oh, wait, it said mercenary before, but I guess her mercenary work is to be a bodyguard. All right. Uh, wait, what? Already? How did you do that? You decide against telling her what the name of that mate was. I think it was called the the Fool's Mate? It is indeed called the Fool's Mate. <laughs> Rematch me! I want a do-over! Uh, you know, you can only get that while playing black, so screw the first move advantage. You have the potential for a two-move checkmate. Ah, <laughs> uh, sure, why not? It's not as if you have anything better to do. Ah... Uh, Celeste's brow furrows as she tries to decide her next move. But she hasn't realized the game is already finished. Here! She moves her knight into position to attack your queen. It should have stopped your assault on her king, but... <sighs> Checkmate. A scholar's mate this time. I actually don't know that one, though. What? Come on! How do you keep doing that? You look at the closed door to the kitchen. Linhart and Miss Timora's discussion is becoming louder. But it doesn't sound like they'll be done anytime soon. Again, I'll definitely beat you this time. For someone who clearly had never played before, she's quickly improving with each game. It's impressive. She's observing your strategies and adapting them to her playstyle. With that way she's playing now, she could even defeat a nationally ranked noble. What? Already? <laughs> Checkmate. <laughs> but even so, you've been playing this game for a lot longer than she has. How are you always one step ahead of me? It's like you're reading my mind. As if you'd even need to. One more game. I'll get you this time. <sighs> Hello, Cuthbert. Oh, wait. Hmm. She calls us by our last name. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Miss Timora emerges from the kitchen with Flintheart. They both look mentally exhausted. It looks like negotiations didn't go well. Hi, Dad. Well, hello, sweetie. Finhart looks irritated, but as soon as he sees Celeste, he quickly hides it behind a smile. You wonder what the discussion was about. What's this? Some kind of game? Tamora glances at the pieces on the board. 
Don't feel too bad about losing to him. He's nationally ranked. Oh, you're a professional. Is that why you're wearing a suit? No, chess is just a hobby. I'm actually a defense attorney. An attorney? Speaking of which, we should probably be on our way. I... Sorry for refusing you after you came all this way. I really respect what you're doing. But I don't want anything to do with your mage friends. Aww, she's sad. You wonder what he meant by that. Was Mr. Mora trying to introduce him to one of our clients? Anyways, it, it's getting late. If you leave now, you won't be back into the city until morning. Mmm, she's right. This region is littered with bandits and brig brigands. You wouldn't want to run into them this late. Uh, I guess you have a point. We have plenty of empty rooms that you can stay in until the morning. It's the least I can do after you came all this way. Well, if it isn't too much trouble, you might as well stay here until tomorrow. The tavern is shut down. We still have some sheets and blankets. I'll go get the rooms ready. Celeste and Flynnhart leave the dining area to get your rooms ready. You're left in the dining room with Miss Tamara. <laughs> I call her Tamara. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry, wrong game. So, I take that negotiations didn't go well. No, I didn't expect him to be so stubborn. Honestly, I have no idea what that man has against mages. Well, there is one way to find out. Uh, why are you being so secretive? If your business with Flintheart is related to your cl our clients, I can help. It isn't important. Your presence was not necessary. Ah, uh, that's such an obvious lie. But you can't read a single thought from her mind. She's had years of practice hiding her thoughts from the eye of Horus. Um... Celeste enthusiastically comes back downstairs. But she, she seems to have noticed the tension between you and Miss Tim Timora. Sorry to interrupt, but your rooms are ready now. Right. Uh, thank you. An awkward silence hangs in the air as you and Miss Timora head upstairs. You reach the upper hallway, and you see two rooms that Celeste prepared for you. Oh, wow, yeah, this looks good. <laughs> uh, Miss Timora, I'm just gonna call it Timora instead of Timora, stops before entering her room. Uh, you are playing chess with Flinhot's daughter earlier. Was she any good? Not at first, but she got a lot better as we kept playing. Sorry for leaving you there for so long. I didn't expect our discussion to last that long. No, it's fine. Despite everything, I enjoyed playing against her. I see. Well, I suppose you are at that age. No, 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 it's not like that. <laughs> it's just that outside of tournaments, I never really get to play against other players. Or another player. And you only ever want to play Shogi against me. Oh, they have Shogi here too. Because Shogi is clearly superior. It's complete anarchy, it's what it is. You just bring the fallen pieces back to life like some kind of necromancer. It adds depth, dropping adds a dimension of play that isn't present in chess. You sternly look at each other. Your positions are already made. After a few moments of silence, you both burst out laughing. <sighs> I'm sorry if it looks like I don't trust you. I know you're just trying to help. But there are some things about my work that I just can't tell you about yet. Zero. <laughs> or oh. But one day, I'll tell you everything. Oh, uh, right. I'm, I'm sorry for prying. I just want to show you that I'm ready to be an attorney. You are. I know you are. The rare praise from your mentor catches you off guard. Uh, anyways, get some rest. You should mentally prepare yourself for the journey tomorrow. Right. You completely forgot about the carriage ride. Oh no! <laughs> the carriage ride back. You can already feel your stomach churning in protest. You lay in the bed that the McCoy has prepared for you. And as you close your eyes, you slowly drift into a deep slumber. As this happens, you feel something invasive. Your mind drifts away, and you feel yourself being pulled elsewhere. Whoa! Okay! <laughs> you find yourself in a surreal and unsettling landscape. You're fairly certain that you're dreaming right now. But some instinct in the back of your mind tells you that something fundamentally something is fundamentally wrong about this. What? Okay. Don't jump scare me. Um You see a woman in the far distance. She's directly staring at you. Uh-oh. What what? Pr presence. 
She's murmuring something. You can't quite make it out. Is she trying to say something to you? Uh, fi finally found. Uh, oh god. I finally found you. Whoa. Wait, what does that say? Heaven's born. Oh, heaven's born. Okay. Oh, I'm glad it didn't jump scare me that bad. Whoa. I can't exactly remember what the woman said to you. Oh, yes, you can. You can check the message. Uh, heaven's born. But whatever her words were, they sent a piercing chill down your spine. Your breath is heavy and your heart is beating at 100 miles per hour. <sighs> Calm down. It was just a dream. At least, that's what you try to tell yourself. But please, just let me explain. I, I don't want to hear it. You hear the voices of Celeste and Flynnhart ring out from downstairs. It must be extremely late. What could they possibly be arguing about at this hour? I want you out to my house! Out! A dead silence lingers in the air before you hear someone rush out of the tavern. Whoever left slams the door behind them. What was that all about? It was none of your business. You only met those two today. It would probably be best not to get involved in their affair. And as you tell yourself that, a brief image of Celeste's smile appears in your mind. Ugh. Damn it. You slowly make your way out of your room. But the hallway is nearly pitch black. You can barely see a few inches ahead of you. You have to watch your step to avoid tripping. Huh! You run to Flynnhart, who is slowly walking up the stairs. Even this close, it's hard to see his expression in the darkness. This is pretty light, man. It's pretty light to me. Uh, sorry, I, I just heard. Right, I forgot you two were. His words trail off. Is everything okay? Uh, he has like sad, but like. So what is this exactly? Like, oh. <laughs> Mm. Sorry, I I'm just gonna... You awkwardly shimmy past for the heart and head downstairs. He doesn't move out of your way. It's clear his mind is elsewhere. You arrive at the dining room, but you don't see Celeste anywhere. Honestly though, it's hard to tell with how dark the room is. Uh, Celeste? Are you still here? You don't receive an answer. You remember hearing someone slam the front door earlier. Your eyes are drawn to the tavern entrance. Celeste? No answer. Celeste? Where are you? Ugh. The merchant you spoke with before steps out of his shop holding a lantern. He appears irritated by all the noise you've been making. Oh, you're that kid from before. Do you have any idea what time it is? This isn't the city. You can't just make a bunch of noise like this. Right. Uh, sorry. I was just looking for Celeste. Who? Celeste McCoy. She's Flynn Hart's daughter. Uh The merchant's expression becomes a little colder. Do you know them? What do you want with uh, what do you want with that bastard? That damn mage. Oh, oh, he's a mage. What what? Those two probably woke up half the street with all the yelling. Wait, actually, did he have an arcane art? I don't I thought maybe he didn't say, but I didn't think he did. He had none. But I guess he's still a mage? Those two probably woke up half the street with all the yelling. I don't need you to keeping us up too. If I hear any more noise, I'm gonna call the town guard. Before you can get a word in, the merchant walks back into his home and in a huff. Ugh. You look around, but you don't see any sign of Celeste. You decide to continue searching. To be fair, making noise at this hour would also kind of annoy me. I don't really blame the merchant. But there's something going on. Ugh, I can't believe I said those things to her. She'll never forgive me for this. I see your temper is short as oh ever, Flynn Hart. You! Honestly, how do you live in this darkness? Luxo. Oh, it got lit up a little bit. What are you doing here? And how dare you bring that witchcraft into my house? You've been busy lately. Your little rallies have gained quite a lot of support. Too much support for my family's liking. And what? You came all this way to convince me to stop? You have my word. If you stop spreading dissidents, no harm will come to you or your family. Ha! <laughs> your word is as good as the dirt you lick off of King Oliver's boots. As if I'd ever trust the words of a murderer like you. 
<sighs> Flinhart, please. As someone you once called a friend, I'm only going to ask one time. Friend? Friend? I'll be dead in the ground before I ever call the likes of you a friend. Get out of my house. I don't have time for your nonsense. Uh oh. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think you'll have much time for anything. What? Damn it. Damn it! Flinhart, you fool! Why couldn't you just have listened to me? Or have just little. <laughs> whoops. Ah. Rudolph, I require your assistance. Uh, yes, sir. By the scaled lord, what did you. You. You killed him! Hmm. Alert the town guard. Tell them that you saw his daughter fleeing the scene. I'm sure the neighbors heard them arguing with each other. They'll immediately suspect her. Rise, Rudolph. At once, sir. You've been searching for Celeste for a while. How long have you been outside? Two hours? Three? However long it's been, it's clearly taking a toll on you. Where is she? What am I gonna do now? You hear a faint voice. Could it be? Oh! As you peer behind an old tree, you finally find her. She looks just as tired as you are, perhaps even more so. Her eyes are puffy and red, but she's doing her best to hide it with a smile. Uh, I've been looking all over for you. Oh, sorry. I'm guessing we woke you up? Yeah. Is everything okay? It's nothing. It was just an argument. But from the way she reacted, this is clearly not common. You suppose that's none of your business. You decide not to pry further. Have you been looking for me all this time? I have. Uh, thank you. But I'm okay now. You should head back. What about you? I think I'm gonna stay out a little bit longer. Uh... You know that you, <clears throat> you know that you should mind your business, but I'm sure whatever happened between you two, I'm sure whatever happened between you two, it's nothing that you can't talk out. Huh? It doesn't happen a lot, but sometimes Miss Timora and I get into fights too. But no matter what happens, you are always able to talk through it. I, S sorry, uh, sorry. I know it's none of my business, but I just. Uh, no, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, oh, she, she's happy, she's happy. You're right. Let's go back. W what? You arrive back at the McCoy Tavern. But now it's surrounded by several carriages and knights cladded in plate armor. I is that the Inquisition? W what? The Arcane Inquisition. They're an order of knights that investigate crimes committed using magic. As you say the word crimes, you and Celeste share a glance and come to the same realization. Both of you rush towards the tavern, but Celeste outpaces you by a large margin. <coughs> She's so damn fast! What? What? No, no, no! She reaches the tavern before you, and before anyone can stop her, she takes a look inside the inn. Whatever she saw made her cry out in anguish. She drops to the ground in tears. Ugh, oh wait, oh, oh, it's our, it's our gumshoe. <clears throat> There she is, Celeste McCoy, by the authorities of the Wyvern God Crown, I'm placing you under arrest. Upon seeing Celeste, one of the knights steps forward and grabs her. Surprisingly, she's able to break free from his grip and tries to push further into the tavern. Noticing the commotion, three other knights rush to grab her and begin dragging her away. She kicks and screams against them, desperately trying to break free. Even between the three knights, it's taking all of their strength to subdue her. What are you doing to her? What's going on? T Tyrion? Timora, Miss Timora approaches you. You breathe a small sigh of relief when you see that she's okay. Miss Timora? Bah! I should have known that he was one of yours! Just stay out of my way! Miss Timora, what's going on? Why is the Inquisition here? Uh, I'm surprised myself. But from what I understand, Linhart McCoy has been murdered. Murdered? Alright, let's let's save our progress. 
You follow the Inquisition back to the city where Celeste is being detained. According to Miss Tamora, Celeste was the prime suspect in Flint Hart's murder. And due to- oh wait a second. I said that in the court in the beginning. We saw that she was an assistant, but I guess she- yeah, no, she's a defendant. But she's on the, the she's she's like on the bench with us, or yeah, on our side of the bench. <laughs> and due to the supposed nature of the crime, her case would be pushed to the trial immediately. But many elements of the situation still don't make sense. The Inquisition only investigates crimes committed using magic. So why is Celeste a prime suspect? Could she be a mage? This is ridiculous. She has the right to speak to an attorney. Anyways, you find yourself met with another hurdle. A very frustrating one. Yeah, well, we can't let you see her until she's been processed. Her trial is in an hour! How has she not been processed yet? I don't know what to tell you, kid. I wish I could help. You don't need to use the eye to know that that is a complete lie. So, you're really planning on defending her? Do you know if she can even afford a lawyer? I can't just stand here and do nothing. You saw them, didn't you? There's no way she would murder her father like that. Ugh. I know that look. I was saving this for a special occasion, but... Oh, <laughs> it's not an attorney badge. It's an attorney's runestone. A magical runestone that allows you to take pictures of crime scenes and write notes telepathically. Every attorney has one. It's almost like a badge for them. <laughs> almost like a badge. Oh, okay. We got the attorney's runestone added to our notes. This is... An attorney's runestone? If you're going to defend her, you're gonna need one. I... You begin to tear up. You've always wanted one of these ever since you were a child. It's basically a badge of honor for attorneys. Don't cry, Kuthbet. Sorry. Anyways, keep one thing in mind. If you try to defend her, the Inquisition isn't going to fight you fairly. Our court system only exists to create the illusion of justice. They hate people like us, and they'll do everything in their power to sabotage you. Damn it! You knew that they'd try to get in your way. You didn't expect them to do it this blatantly. Ugh, what the hell is all this noise? You! You're that knight from the tavern! That's Commander Orm White to you, kid. Orm? Or Orm? Orm? I think it's Orm. Orm White, Occupation Knight. Age 64, no arcane art. <sighs> I had a feeling that Timora would be sniffling around this case. But I didn't expect to see her send a kid to do her dirty work. I'm just giving him like the voice I gave Lance from Xenoblade. Uh, Commander, he says he wants to talk to the mage. And? She's got a right to attorney, doesn't she? Uh, well, she hasn't been processed. Commander White looks confused for a moment. <laughs> the hell kind of bullshit are you trying to pull? <laughs> Let him through, you idiot! <laughs> Alright, he's a good guy. He's not a part of this corrupt system, hopefully. Y yes, sir! Competent gumshoe. The knight leads you through the halls of the dungeon. For something you built in the capital, it looks extremely old and decrepit. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of emotions there. You pick up the negative emotions of the prisoners nearby. It's a heavy and almost crushing feeling. You've always had to avoid crowded places because of how sensitive you are to people's thoughts. Wait, so is the Eye of Horus like his actual eye, or is it like an artifact? Like, is it artificial, or is it naturally in Tyrian? Tyrian? You've never felt this much concentrated despair before. Uh, oh, oh, it's you! Celeste is lying down on the cold floor of one of the dungeon cells. But she immediately gets up as soon as she sees you. Uh, what are you doing here? Miss Tamora told me about what happened to your father. Um, so sorry. Uh, I just don't understand. I just don't understand any of this. Why would someone do this? Why are they blaming it on me? And why are they blaming me for it? I'm not sure about the details, but it's clear that there were elements of magic involved in what happened. Since they arrested you based on that evidence, I can only conclude one thing. Celeste, you're a mage, aren't you? Ah! That, there's no sense in hiding it anymore. Uh... Yes, I am. Do you have noble blood? Of course not! Why'd you say that? Sorry, but the ability to use magic is hereditary. 
Most mages tend to have some kind of noble blood. Uh, honestly, I don't like thinking about it. Um, the daughter of Jolene. <laughs> Jolene. And Thinheart McCoy. That's all I needed to know about myself. Uh, so her mother might be some kind of noble then. Huh, maybe. It would probably be best not to push the matter further. Anyways, you're probably arrested because you're a mage. What? A crime was committed using magic, and you were the only mage around that time. Is that seriously the only reason? I only know how to cast one spell! <laughs> the Arcane Inquisition doesn't care about the truth. They only care about closing their case. Ah, uh, Celeste, your case is being pushed to trial. You're gonna be brought before a judge within the- oh, within the hour? <laughs> I know they said that before, but- <laughs> What? No one told me anything! Damn it, they weren't even planning on telling her? <laughs> Uh, if you'll have me, I'd like to be your defense counsel for the trial. R right, I forgot that you were an attorney. Would you really do that for me? After everything I've seen them do, I just can't stand by and do nothing. But they're a part of the kingdom. Do we even have a chance? It's hopeless. Celeste, man, king, or god, I won't let them do anything to you. What? S sorry. It's just something I have a habit of saying. No, don't apologize. I really appreciate you doing this. It's clear this entire situation is bittersweet for her. And because of the Inquisition's delays, you haven't had any time to investigate the crime scene. You are confident before, but you begin to doubt whether or not you can really do this. Everything is happening so fast, it feels unreal. No, you have to do this. This is the exact reason why you became a lawyer. No matter what happens, you'll quit Celeste. Into the courtroom we go! It's a lot brighter here. Oh man, <laughs> look at him, look at him! Man, his pupils are really small. <laughs> he looks like he's he'll have like a resting, uh, I'm really angry face. A courtroom. I'm in a real courtroom. Actually, entering the courtroom has taken a lot of wind out of, <laughs> out of your sails. You've never been here as an attorney before. You've only ever acted as Miss Timora's assistant. Uh, I forgot the voice I gave her already. <laughs> the woman at the prosecutor's bench is staring at you. Miss Timora mentioned her before you went to see Celeste. What was her name again? I think it was Arya Steelwind. Name, Arya Steelwind. Occupation, prosecutor. You can feel the coldness of her glare burrowing into you. Why is she staring you down? Is she trying to intimidate you? Because it's working! <laughs> oh, bald judge! The court is now in session for the trial of Celeste McCoy. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Oh, uh... The defense is also ready, Your Honor. It doesn't necessarily sound very ready. Regardless, let's begin the p proceedings. Prosecutor... Oh, uh, actually, this is work. I'll give him an older, older man voice. Prosecutor Steelwind, please list the charges. The defendant is Celeste McCoy, a mercenary for hire and a registered mage. Wait, did she just say mercenary? Yeah, I had to take up a job after my family's tavern was shut down. Oh, right. <laughs> That's not exactly the first occupation you'd choose. She's charged with a degree, second degree murder and, and the negligent misuse of arcane arts. I see. So, there was magic involved. Yes, the crime occurred within the McCoy Tavern, a local inn that shut down years ago. The locals reported hearing a loud commotion coming from the within the building. Hours later, a, a carriage driver that was nearby checked the disturbance. It was then that he found the victim, the defendant's sword still impaled in his dead body. The, Inqui the Inquisition has provided an autopsy report and a record of the sword. Will it be updated? Will the autopsy report be updated? Autopsy report. Flinhart McCoy died after being stabbed from behind with a ma magical blade. Fatal wounds show heavy traces of transmutation magic, which is the only magic she knows how to do. Damn it! <laughs> Celeste's sword. The alleged murder weapon. It's an ornately designed sword, but has no magical properties. No magical properties. What's the defendant's relationship with the victim? I see that they share the same last name. The defendant is the victim's daughter, but not by blood. 
She was adopted into the family when she was an infant. Her birth parents are currently unknown. <laughs> I bet she's like a princess or something. I see. What an unfortunate turn of events. To begin, the prosecution would like to call Commander Oren White to the stand. Witness, please state your name and occupation for the court. Name's Oren White. I'm a commander of the Arcane Inquisition. Oren, could you please testify about the details of the Inquisition's investigations? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, whoa. Witness testimony. Let's go. We got a call late at night. Someone discovered a dead body inside the McCoy Tavern. When we arrived on the scene, we found Flynnhar McCoy dead on the floor. The defendant's sword was still inside of him. We had several witnesses who heard the victim and the defendant in a loud argument before the body was discovered. The argument must have turned ugly because the defendant killed the victim using her magic sword. Uh... Isn't that really incriminating? <laughs> One of her possessions is the murder weapon? Ah... Uh, Mr. Cuthbert, you may begin the cross-examination. Uh, uh, you open your mouth to respond, but nothing comes out. You can't think of anything to say. Everything is blank. Um, Mr. Cuthbert? Hey, what are you doing? This is the part where you say something, right? I, I, I'm sorry, I don't... Your anxiety is just getting worse, and your breaths are becoming more and more desperate. Are you hyperventilating? Uh, what a disappointment. Uh, I was hoping to fight against the infamous Ruby Tamora today. But it's clear that you can't even hold a candle to her. Your Honor, it's clear that the defense has nothing to say against the prosecution's overwhelming evidence. Yep, this case is pretty open and shut. <laughs> N no, wait! <laughs> this is... This isn't what's supposed to happen. Uh... I'm sorry, Tyrion. I... I couldn't acquit Frey. Frey... She was found guilty. Uh, what? That means... Are they going to execute her? No, not not again. <laughs> are, these, are you seriously going to let that happen again? So there's a Frey, who's a girl. Oh, okay. Uh, Tyrion! Celeste grabs your shoulders and shakes you out of your panic. You need to calm down. Her gaze is calm and focused, despite the gravity of the situation. But she looks stern, not angry. I'm sorry, I didn't mean for this to- Stop! Just listen to me. You know what to do, right? Uh, just do it the same way you play chess. What? I, I don't know, you were just so calm and focused when we were playing before. No matter how close I got to beating you, you always knew how to stay calm and win. So just channel that feeling and take a look at the- Pieces? That doesn't make any sense, and yet- Oh, <sighs> breathe in, breathe out. Okay, let's go. <laughs> he took a moment to focus and let everything else disappear from the world. Every statement that he made, every word that came out of his mouth, each of those is a possible weakness that you can attack. Every bleak moment can be turned around. You just need to consider every angle. Mm. My apologies for the delay, Your Honor. The defense is ready to begin cross-examining the witness. Very well. Huh. There we go. Thank God that worked. <laughs> Carefully examine every statement that he made and find something that contradicts with the evidence in your notes. Once you do that, present the contradicting evidence and prove his testimony is false. Oh man, I haven't played a Ace Attorney game in a while, so this is giving me a lot of feelings. Uh, or at least like, kind of like fully played one. Cross-examinations. You are cross-examining a witness. Carefully examine each statement that they made and find the statement that contradicts a clue, a spell, or a profile in your notes. Once you identify the false statement, click present button and present the contradicting evidence to move forward. We got a call last night, someone discovered the- Press, go! At what time exactly did you get this call, and who discovered the body? They ca the call came in at 1.25 a.m. As for the witness who discovered it, he wants to remain incognito. Uh, it's not unusual for a witness to stay anonymous. It's well within their rights. But this would be a lot easier if you can question the witness directly. What happened when you arrived, Commander? We arrived on the scene and we found Flynn Hall McCoy dead on the floor. The defendant's sword was still inside of him. Go! Boom! How did you know the sword was my client's? His sword is made out of the same kind of special alloy. Or some kind of special alloy. I think it was forged out of the country or something. <laughs> 
It'd be hard to mistake something like that. We also have several eyewitnesses who verify that the sword belonged to the Vendant. She made no effort to hide it from the public. On the contrary, she's quite proud to show it off. But even if the sword belonged to my client, that doesn't necessarily mean that she was the one who stabbed him. Uh, yeah, well... We have several witnesses who heard the victim and the defendant in a loud argument before the body was discovered. Go! How they know it was my client and the victim were arguing. You were there, weren't you? You had to have heard them too. Every witness we talked to knew it was them. <laughs> oh well. Your Honor, it's clear that the defense is just playing devil's advocate. Even he should have recognized their voices. Oh, <laughs> well, they got you there. <laughs> Their argument must have turned ugly because the defendant uh, killed the victim using her magic sword. That's conjecture. Weren't there plenty of people around who could have committed the crime? The tavern has been closed for years. The defendant, the victim, and Ruby Tamora were the only ones there before the body was discovered. Plus, the murder weapon would definitely belong to her. Well, it's given that Mr. Tamora didn't do this, and it'd be hard to prove that someone else was at the crime scene. You can't help but feel that something's off about what you just said. You shouldn't have panicked so much before. His testimony is straightforward, but that will actually make this easier. Assuming that Miss McCoy is innocent, there has to be a flaw in his logic. You just need to compare every statement to each piece of evidence in your notes. Once you find a contradiction, present that piece of evidence to a contradicting statement. Uh, I don't remember so far. Uh, I want to say it's probably this, this part, but let's take a good look at our evidence. The alleged murder weapon it's an ornately designed sword, but has no magical properties. Autopsy. Died after being stabbed from behind with a magical blade. Wounds show heavy traces of transmutation magic. But there's no magical properties on this. Arya Steelwind is 18. <laughs> okay. And she has evocation arcane arts. Oh, here it is. Because of the Vendant killed the victim using her magic sword. But this sword is uh, no magical properties. OBJECTION! OBJECTION! Commander White, you testified that the victim was killed using the defendant's magical sword. Am I correct? Yeah, it's pretty obvious when you look at the crime scene. I'd actually think that I'd have to disagree with you on that. Ah, uh, the defendant's sword couldn't po have possibly been the murder weapon. What are you talking about, kid? The sword was inside of his body. Of course that's what killed him. That may be the case, but take a look at the autopsy report. It states that the fatal wound had heavy traces of magic. How would a non-magical sword leave traces of magic on the body? Huh, what? Huh. To leave a trace like that, the wound would have to have been created with something magical. A client's sword... Uh, my client's sword may look fancy and expensive, but it's entirely mundane. That doesn't make a lick of sense. If the sword didn't kill him, why was it in the body? Yes, I find that quite strange as well. Well, there's only one reasonable explanation, Your Honor. The wound was created magically. And someone shoved the sword into the wound afterwards. What the hell are you talking about? The defendant is a damn mage. She could have easily killed the victim using magic. That may be, Commander. But why would she kill the victim using magic, then stab him with her sword? She would just be incriminating herself. No, if anything, this series of events proves one thing. Someone used magic to kill the victim, and then they pushed my client's sword into the wound to- wound, <laughs> It's a wound by accident. Wound to frame her. OBJECTION! Don't get ahead of yourself. What? Your Honor, the defense is trying to spin the facts in his favor. He claims that the third party committed the crime and used the sword to frame the defendant. But wouldn't the simpler explanation be this? Magic was, was being channeled through the sword at the time of death. That's what left the magical trace on the body. Commander, please tell the defense how the murder was committed using magic. W what? Uh, all right, all right. I think I see where you're going with this. All right, second testimony. Okay, it's true that the sword itself isn't magic. Magic can still be channeled through it. The defendant over there? Her spell comp compendium has a spell called Mage Blade. She must have used it on the sword before stabbing the victim. 
That spell is the reason why there are traces of transmutation magic on the wound. So her spell compendium contains a spell called Mage Blade. A spell compendium is a magical device that lists every spell a mage can cast. Luckily, Celeste's compendium only contains one spell. That means she can only cast one spell. Celeste, do you have your spell compendium with you? No, I left it at the tavern after... Well, you know... If you can't look at the description for Mage Blade, you'll have to approach this another way. The commander's testimony was a lot vaguer this time. If you press a statement, you might be able to find new information that you can use against him. Pressing statements. I already did this like four times. <laughs> During cross-examinations, you can press statements to acquire more information. Sometimes, pressing the right statement can make the witness add a statement to their testimony. Alright. Well, I think I'm gonna end it here for today because I feel like, um... This is the first case. It's probably not gonna be too long, but there's... I know there are gonna be plenty of other, uh... Witnesses after this dude. At least one, because, you know, we saw it in the beginning of the game. I didn't expect there to be a small investigation section. That took a lot longer than I expected because usually, in almost every Ace Attorney game, you start out you start out at the um, at court. But yeah, you know this was I go you know I keep comparing it to Ace Attorney, but it's very clearly inspired by it. But so far, this game has been pretty nice. <laughs> uh, the artwork is very clean, and uh, I mean, just pretty good overall. I saw one typo. I think there was just like a random. Oh, at the end of the period. Um, but yeah, this game seems like it's really hitting that one niche that I really want to have filled. Uh, yeah, really feeling this. But um, this is like, I'm pretty sure it's an indie game. And uh, this game came out sometime in June. I want to say like mid to late June. And the game is still being updated to fix like some of the problems I mentioned, such as typos and whatnot. But if you enjoyed... If, if you enjoyed what you saw, and you're also a fan of Ace Attorney like me, feel free to check out the people who made this game. You saw who they were at the beginning of this episode. I can't remember off the top of my head, but so far, they've done a great job. But we'll continue with this case next time. And until then, I will be seeing you. See ya!